I have the pleasure to interview once again the legendary singer songwriter Tarja Turunen. Uh, Tarja, thank you so much for being here once again, and and it's lovely to chat with you again. Thank you for having me. It's been a while, huh? <laughs> it has thank been a while, and it has. I suppose it had has been a while since you since you last came to Brazil. How was the? How does it feel to to come to Brazil again? I mean. You're not here, of course, but you're, you're coming in April to do three shows in Brazil, including Sao Paulo, Limeira, and Rio de Janeiro. How does it feel? Are you excited as maybe as the first time you came? I feel like uh, five years old. <laughs> Seriously. No, I'm super excited. I'm super, super, trooper excited about this opportunity. It's going to be my, be my first tour, like a proper tour. Uh, after the pandemic, we're still in it. But hey, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to Brazil because I'm so super excited about this opportunity. God, I've missed so much the shows, but I miss my audience, my public, the the energy that people have always given me. There is no place really that I can compare than you know. Receiving the energy from from the audience is like you can't receive that kind of energy or adrenaline anywhere anywhere else. So I'm I'm really happy to go back to that sort of normal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and this time you'll be coming with a with a band from Norway, uh, Tristania. What what can the fans expect from these shows in terms of the the set list or what are you bringing to the fans? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm very happy Tristania is there, yes. So uh, my band is um, partially South American, partially European, the musicians joining me uh, in South America. Very nice, very two guitar players, bass player, drummer and keyboard player. Um, then the set list will be based still on my In The Raw last album because I'm still on a tour with In The Raw. It's crazy. I've been postponing shows for, I think, for two years. Yes, but four times or some we have tried before to get back on the road and it's been impossible. So it's, uh, it's been a really big mess. So now finally we are promoting still my latest album that I got just released before I started touring. And so, uh, oh. but um, of course, you can expect to for us to play songs that you already know my fans know and you know the golden ones <laughs> and some surprises i suppose yeah sure and, and and it's been 25 years since you released your first album i don't know if you if you realize that if you if you count the years or if you have this uh discipline of knowing exactly when things happen or but i mean i mean you achieved so many things in your career uh in finland and everywhere else uh, when you, when i ask you what what were the highlights of your career what do you think what would you say i mean you played for 500,000 people in poland you conquered latin america like as if it was your own home home uh continent or or region what were the highlights you did you did so much you did you were a tv star at the voice <laughs> in finland <laughs> Yeah. How many things, how many hours does your day have? <laughs> I just today, I just today said to my my personal trainer, I was making gym in the morning and she came and I, I told her I should have three lives. Then I probably would have time to do everything that I would like to. I'm still a person, I'm I'm a progressive person. I like really I live my dream sort of because it's really like that. I'm living my dream. Through the music, people, my fans, my listeners, they have given me the opportunity really to live my dream. I've been talking about this throughout my all albums that you should keep on dreaming because there is no life without dreams and fight for them. Um, I'm reading Paulo Coelho's books. He's writing about dreams as well. So it is like that. I mean, I've been very blessed to be able to, to do what I love. And it's a privilege to be honest with you. Yes, I'm doing a lot of different kind of things, but I really, I'm doing them with care and I'm doing them with love. Hmm. Yeah, that really shows and, and your fans really notice the love you give. And, and I, uh, so I suppose that's the highlight of your career, the, the possibility yeah. of, of doing what yes. you love, right? 
Yeah, I cannot really mention you one highlight sort of, uh, of course, personally, I can say that when I became a mother, it was a highlight. It is still my highlight, um, you know, super change in life sort of for better. Even I didn't know what is to be a mother before. I mean, there is no way for you to discover it before it really happens. So that kind of things I can mention, but career wise, I've been so doing so many different things, but I would say that, that it is my highlight that I still today can make people happy with my music. That is really what I'm trying very hard trying to, even though my music can be heavy and hard, the, the heavy part of my music, but then I'm releasing songs with the project like Outlanders that is electronic and it just suits your soul when you listen to those songs or the acoustic or the classical concerts that I'm performing, Christmas things, you know, different. So I have this darkness in me, but I have the light, <laughs> light in me and, I just want to make people happy with my music. That's that's it. Yeah, I was going to ask when you mentioned Paulo Coelho. Paulo Coelho also inspired you to create your, I don't know if you can call it a side project, The Outlanders. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's a, it's a project you have. Uh, it's not real electronic music. It's all it's a mix of, of different styles. And you always have a, a guest as well, a fantastic uh, guitar player, at, at least in the first two uh, tracks uh, you had uh, uh, Trevor Rabin who played with Yes and and the next one will be with Veron Wright uh, from uh, Living Color uh, so tell me and Audi Miola one of the most iconic uh, musicians of all time I mean how can you gather all these elements and, and people I mean I know uh, how do you did you meet them or do you invite them and they say yes or are they personal friends how how does it happen some some of them are some of them are some some of these people i have met before we've uh, for example with aldi i met him in buenos aires after his concert i was there drinking a red glass of red wine with him in the backstage and we talked and talked about music and then you know things like that mm, there will be joe satriani in other other future songs um, I'm friends with him since many, many years already. So some people I know, but others I didn't. And it was incredible that I got to get these insanely beautiful talents uh, in these songs. There is Jennifer Batten playing in one of the songs. And oh, she played so beautifully, and so beautifully. Uh, there is um, Steve Rothery from Marillion. Wow. No, all very distinctive styles and sounds, uh, but they captured these songs like they're one of their own songs and they went for it. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I was so happy. Because, so, because they also admire you and you're a fantastic <laughs> artist and they all, they all look up and say they want to collaborate with you. That's why. No, but I mean, seriously, they were so, so, um so very kind and uh, to see what i wanted to you know achieve with this it's a it's a project of mine it's a project to make people feel happy and and um, you know the pandemic really made us feel this togetherness where we are you know um and i think they really went for it because of they heard the music calling mm. And I also do the same, you know, I jump into collaborations on stuff when I really hear the music calling. Um, so it is important. Yeah, we can't forget to mention Tor Torsten Stenso, who's your partner at, uh, at the Outlanders. How, how did you guys first meet and how did you decide to make this, this project uh, a real project? <laughs> We first met in, in the island of Ibiza, here in Ibiza in Spain. We started writing rock songs together for my first rock album, My Winter Storm. We became very good friends. He moved to, he was at that time living there on the island, but then he moved to the island of Antigua in Caribbean. And I followed him there once to write new songs again for my next rock release. I fell in love with the island. My husband fell in love with the island and we bought a little casita there, like a little house, summer house. And so we have been going there all three, all these years since 2008, I think, 2009, more or less. 
and Torsten is there and we've been always kind of brainstorming together and then suddenly I was just saying that hey you know you you are the pro in this electronic music you're the producer you're doing that that's your trademark and I have no idea what is there you know could you do something with me and I just showed him some demos that I had written some music and he said yeah let's go for it and then this whole thing became real uh, started to become real with the text of Paulo Coelho as in the first song Outlanders and uh, then I started to brainstorm how I could get a little bit of connection with the rock sort of rock world and then the guitar players came involved it was my idea and then then the whole thing started to take over it took a long time because it was not our priority to work on this project so yeah long time but the pandemic kind of gave us the opportunity to have time to finish it up and wrap it in and, and you know now we have lots of songs beautiful very different <laughs> and just a suggestion uh there are many brazilian uh guitar players amazing ones that would love to be part of that project i don't know if you oh. if it's on the, <laughs> your radar but future outlanders because everything is everything is recorded already so oh, future okay. Outlanders, for, let's for say like future. that <laughs> anyway, you, you, I know you have a very strong relationship with Brazil. You, you came and toured many times. You, you mentioned the inspiration you had from Paulo Coelho. Uh, what do you like about our country? How does it feel to be here? What do you like doing wh when you're here? You, how, do you know how many times you came to Brazil? You know, career? somebody just, you know, that's a good question because somebody just shocked me with a, I was having an email interview and uh, the journalist told me that I've been like more than 30 I mean, I've had more than 30 concerts in Brazil. It's a good number. For me, it's like, <laughs> it's a serious number. 30, ass, you know, wow, that's a good number. <laughs> so I love going there. I love my fans. They've always embraced me with such a cariño, you know, love. And, and, and also asked me why. Huh, for heaven's sake, I don't know. Uh, they feel probably, I have a lot of female followers, but I have also a lot of male followers. And um, probably they see me some somebody as like exotic person coming from so far away, but being strong. I don't know, identity. They, my music appeals to them and they, they really have embraced me. And the thing is that, of course, I love going there. I love the food, picanha. I mean, caipirinha. I, I, picanha is our favorite meat. <laughs> we are always looking with my husband, picanha, anywhere. <laughs> I mean, Spain, where is the picanha? There is only one place I can find it if we want to have a real good barbecue. <laughs> so it's a special, special thing. And, and uh, I have friends there. And so really great place, always. Hmm. So good to hear that. I, well, if you're in Spain, uh, the food there is not is not that bad, right? I mean, the tapas <laughs> no. and the, the wine is is beautiful. The cheese, everything, oh. in, the food there yeah, is not, really, not that bad. We are really spoiled here. We are. We are. Yeah. Uh, and and do you think there's any similarities with with Finnish people? I have some Finnish friends, and they are they all very friendly, and you know, a bit like Brazilians in a way. They they talk. <laughs> they're loud, and they. The way they speak, even the language is kind of uh, sounds like interesting and, and funny in a way, in a good way. Do you think there's any similarities between Brazilians and the Finnish people? You know, the, the, the warm and and how they 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 are very close friends to each other and loyal friends and stuff. I think the ones, the Finns that you might know probably are the ones that have been traveling the world and, you know, seeing places and, you know, like me. Yeah, we tend to be loud and very like open minded and, you know, going for going for challenges and jumping to each other, you know, but the Finns that are living in Finland, they might not be like that necessarily. Um, don't take me wrong. I mean, it's it's a cold, dark country in the north. <laughs> and, you know, when you go to the countryside, people don't necessarily really like that you enter their Mm. property you know in a way it's not a bad thing at all i'm i'm not saying this as a, something negative but it's not a the common thing 
Yeah, it's more private. Yeah, exactly, more private. And so, but uh, absolutely there is some similarities. When I was living there, in, just in your neighborhood in Argentina, for almost 10 years, I felt a lot of similarities. I didn't feel like a, for me, it was not a cultural shock to really get myself into the Argentinians, Latin American culture. Um, I felt very welcomed and I felt like there is a lot, lot in common. And you're, and you're mentioning about the pandemic, how it helped in a way to, to be creative, to have more time to, to, to dedicate to, to side projects and, and other activities. Yeah. And, and uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. My alarms are ringing like, oh, no my problem. God. Interviews. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot, lots of them. But how, how were the, was the pandemic for you? And how do you think that we're, I mean, it, we're not coming out of it exactly. It, it, it's definitely better than it was before. But how do you think, how do you see that as an artist to, is it something that could inspire you somehow to, to be creative or, or do you think that humanity learned something from, from this or are we, are we going back backwards to where we were before? Well, since ever the history of humanity, we, we have a very short memory, I would say, uh, in general. Uh, it's been since ever. We, we do not remember. Uh, but, but on the other hand, I, it was a shock for me in the beginning when all this happened. It was very hard to not to you know, understand where you are at. And uh, I didn't even touch my, my piano, my grand piano that is just here next to me. I'm in my working room now. And there were months and months I didn't even, I just walked past the instrument. I didn't even touch it. It was a hard hit to under, really not to, to understand that I am not able to work any longer. My work is not permitted. I cannot. So the whole thing that when that will stop, it was my first time ever to be without performing uh, in, like you said, 25 years or so. So I've been a performer all my life, what I know and remember sort of. And so that all was gone. So it is very hard to come out of that bubble and start being productive and inspired. And, uh, but I did that. I fought against the universe the beginning. And then I said, do not, because you cannot. You're just one individual. You, you, you are who you are. Find the happiness inside of you and find the happiness around you, what you have at the moment. I have my beautiful family, my beautiful daughter that I haven't been able to be the mother that she really had needed in many times when I'm on, on the road. I am here now, use that time. So it was really, really important to realize that, hey, you know, I can be happy and I can get inspired. Not necessarily the pandemic itself made me inspired, but then I saw the light, sort of, I saw the light that, you know, there are good things in life. And I started taking care of myself and uh, yeah, I've been super productive written a lot of new songs and you know you have to keep on going you yeah. have to find new ways a lot of people everywhere everyone in the world felt the same way in, uh, in different areas of activity anyway but uh we we yeah. totally understand you uh, and and since uh, and about the moment we're living now in europe uh, we're seeing so many sad news coming uh and you're closer to it of course uh and we when we remember like and we see the music that was produced in the 70s, in the early 70s, because of the Vietnam War. Do you think that this could be a, a, another inspiration for musicians and artists to, to write maybe something, to maybe try to help the world? To, I mean, we, we rely on artists and, and, and art in general to, to help us understand what's happening in the world and with humanity. It's, it's a very sad moment for, for, for us, for everyone. Uh, no exception, but can we see a, a reason for for a new inspiration with these sad news as well? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm completely with you in this. Um, absolutely, like we artists, probably in many countries, we have felt like we are kind of left alone with the pandemic because we are getting the hardest hit, sort of 
uh, we were not able to work and so on. But with the war situation and all, we we anyway we survived sort of the pandemic. We are survivors, and the music has always been there to help us. Art has always been there to help us. Us that are involved with it, deeply involved, but also the listeners of our our art. And so in this situation, especially, yes, I'm absolutely sure that music can be there to help and we should get together as artists, definitely. Thank you, Talia. Uh, when when I we're mentioning the, the beginning of your career, it's it's been a, a few years since you first uh, released your first albums. What would you say to that uh, young singer, songwriter, when early 20s, there was just beginning a career, if you could, <laughs> meet her today what what would you tell her live live your dreams i would tell her or him i would definitely encourage him to live your dreams it's and to fight for them and to listen to your heart mainly it's, it's just like that it's as simple as that of course um also you need to find yourself surrounded with good good people um, that you can be heard, let's say. Um, it is not easy. It's a huge challenge, but um, believing in yourself and fighting for your dreams is absolutely important. You might have talent, but you need to have the courage. It requires a lot of courage nowadays to really go for it. Mm. Yeah, you're definitely a, a courageous woman and 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 a very creative and talented uh, artist. I mean, you basically created a, a new music style and and inspired <laughs> so many other artists everywhere in the world and other women that feel that saw you as a role model. How how does it feel to be a a, a role model? Do you, do you do you know the 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 importance that you have for 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 these uh, fans and 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 musicians around the world it's, it's pretty hard to take in your word <laughs> to, to listen to you like that because it's like a, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard because uh, absolutely of course it makes me even more humble in a way that I am very grateful uh, if someone could see me as some you know inspiration you know as a yeah it, it makes me just very humble. I'm I'm just very hardworking woman, and nothing comes in this life without the hard work. Uh, you need to you need to put a lot of effort, tears sometimes, you know, to get your things through. But um, I feel like it's incredible to be able to do still what I'm doing in a way that if people can find my work interesting and ins inspiring, absolutely amazing. Who who were your uh, personal heroes when you when you started, or who are your idols still these days? <laughs> uh, who do you look look at, at 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 as role models? You know, it was very very tough. I was uh, as a young girl, I did not have really those um, role models or someone that I was really look look I would look up for and say that mm, I want to be like her or him. No, I was listening a lot of various kind of music. I studied already classical music since I was six. So I was very, very young. It was the music, the pulsating thing that I was dying to make music. I was always like, I just want to make music. It was so clear to me when I was already like nine or something that I am going to become a musician. And yes, and yes. And so I was really like, in Finland, when there is a possibility, really, there are a lot of possibilities to study music. So I was really going for the high school of music, exams, university, academy, music, music. Like I was very determined, like from my head, mind that I want to study music. I want to become professional one day. Uh, but without having those role models, actually. I was, and I'm still having a lot of people like Peter Gabriel, for example, that I'm really checking out my own work and thinking about him and his career is like, oh my God, this, this man, what he has done, it's incredible. Karita Mattila is a classical singer. She's a classical singer from Finland. She really fought her way. She was very young when she started and fought away. 
has not been the easiest way for her to, you know, make success. Um, but she did it. And so my mother, apart from everything, my mother was a fighter and she she was actually the role model sort of for me to see that the woman needs to be needs to be strong but I would not do the same mistake she did in her life she's not here any longer but I would say that I learned from her not to you know accept things in my life any longer like she did you know that kind of things but um, yeah like musical role models in that clear aspect I never really had yeah but you're definitely one of them Tarja I have no words to thank you. Uh, no words to thank you enough for your time. Uh, it's been great chatting with you. We can't wait for the for April to have you visiting us again. And there will be yes. three amazing shows: 15th of April in Limeira, 16th in São Paulo, and 17th in Rio. And it will be great if we could meet. And and if you if you want some suggestions or recommendations of the best barbecue place uh, where they serve the best picanha. I, I I can give you some. <laughs> that would be amazing. That is amazing. That sounds already too good to be true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's meet up. Come on, come yeah. come to my shows and let me know you're there. Yeah, of I'll, course. I'll let Paulo Baron know. Yeah, my, good, my exactly. good friend Paulo. Perfect, perfect. And I'm super excited to go back to Brazil. I'm so happy to see see the people, feel the energy. I mean, wow, really happy. And thank you for your nice words. Thank you for the music. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You take care and stay stay healthy. <laughs> thank you, Tarja. See you in April. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.